a delicacy for many and rich in proteins which every human being needs. It's very important for the brain functions, most especially if one eats the eyes, so they say. Located in Chamhunga, Shenyi District, is Kabehura Farmers Limited, where we meet Isaac Mohanguzi, the director of this beautiful farm. Isaac is a fish farming entrepreneur and he makes it seem so easy, a venture. His land, which sits 31 ponds, houses both catfish and tilapia as the market demands. Unique to this farm is fish breeding, as we will also find out in this episode. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. So this is the fish hatchery and we use it to breed catfish. I can say it's not easy, but it's doable. According to Isaac, for someone to start fish farming, you will need the following. One, you must have water, constant supply of water, so that you don't experience uh, water shortages. Two, you must have good labor, trained and skilled labor, and um, feed. That includes the capital, of course. It's taken a pond of 450 uh, meters squared. Digging it, you need about 1.5 to excavate. Then you need um, to stock about 1,200 fish. So in, on average, you need about, about 6 million to start one pond of 450 meters squared. For any fish farmer, feeds for the fish is very important because once you lack in that area, then you have no business. What do the fish feed on and how does one get it? Feeds, one, we mix for ourselves. It is a bit cheaper. The ingredients are um, maize bran, uh, sunflower, and mukene. Those are the main ingredients. Yeah, so you can add or subtract accordingly. This is our this is our mixed feed. This is this is our own farm mix. Then we buy from Kajansi Chinese, and uh, sometimes we buy from Yugachik. We feed according to the body weight. Yeah, so the bigger the fish, the more they feed. There is a chart we follow which shows how you should feed. So as they grow, you add on the feeds. Each pond, before he comes, he will have calculated that in this pond, there is fish of, there is this number of fish times the, 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 the quantity per fish, then you get what to feed. You, you see, in, in the, when, when they are growing, they get used to one common so eating point. So, like now, you saw him hitting this kind of thing. You can call them. <laughs> so they come, they know. Could this kind of fish farming be alternative to the traditional way of fishing, considering that the lakes have a lot of challenges lately? Yeah, this is a perfect substitute for, for the, um, the traditional fishing, where we used to get it from Lake Victoria, Lake Edward. Now this is... This is a substitute. It supplements the, the, the it supplements the natural bodies. When one starts a business, among the key consideration is getting profits. How long then would it take to realize profits after setting up, for example, one pond? If you start today, there are many factors, of course. Your management. If you're managing well, you can you can get half a kilo of fish in six months if you are managing well. And uh, that involves uh, many things. That involves the quality of the feed, uh, how many times you feed, how, how fertilized your ponds are. Because some people don't fertilize the ponds. Uh, and the uh, general water quality. Yeah. So there is no standard uh, measure. You must, you must be, your management skills must be up to date. Well, quite interesting here. So ponds too have to be fertilized. Isaac explains how he manages to keep the water clean, first of all, and whether 
this has any impact on the health of the fish. You ensure that they are healthy by feeding them well. That's one. Two, fertilizing the water. Because when you fertilize the water, in there, which in, in, in the water, there are some natural feeds. They are plankton. But you can't see them with your naked eye. We use the natural manure, like chicken droppings. Uh, I think probably that's the best. Uh, some use the cow dung or, or, or these droppings from the goat houses. Yeah, so, but generally chicken droppings are the best. So if you fertilize your ponds well, the feed will be, the fish will be healthy. And if you feed them well with feeds or which are well balanced, they will grow. If, if you want to ensure that they, they are doing well, uh, you do, we sample every month. After three months, we start sampling until you sell. So if they are not growing, then you correct what is, what, whatever is wrong. You check yourself, you move backwards and see if you are feeding uh, the right quantities at the right time. Because fish is selective, if you feed it when it's raining, they will not eat, they will not come out and the feeds will be wasted. How is the market like for fish farmers out there? Is there a ready market? Not to mention that fish in itself is very perishable. The market is good because the, our, our competitors, the, the fishermen from the wild, they are, their harvests are dropping by the day. Every day that passes, they, they get less. So there are no alternatives to do fish farming. So the market is there. All you have to do is to make sure that uh, before you harvest, you have contacted the the buyers, the traders. Because for us, we sell to we sell to traders. We don't sell one one piece. You no, know, we sell we sell we sell at a go. We harvest a pond and sell whatever we we get. On average, a kilo, if we consider a kilo, to be eight thousand. So. If say you, you sell fish of half a kilo and there are one thousand two hundred fish in here. So you can you can do the math and see. So you, the, here the thing is how much feed do you use to get so much meat? Yeah, because if you if you use a lot of feed and get little meat, then you're making a loss. Th these were stocked in uh, January and will be harvested in June, June, July. That's when it will be six months. What has been the highest in terms of kilos? The highest per pound is um, 600 kilos in one harvest year. We, we, we lump them together and measure them. You say in a, in a container or a sack. We, we, we lump them together and measure them. You say in a, in a container or a sack. One would ask, how do you remove the fish from the pond at the time of selling? Isaac explains how the drainage system works. We drain the water. Mm. Then we pick one by one. We sell everything that comes out. Whether small or big, someone will, there is someone to buy it. That's an outlet. So if, if, if it rains, Water will not go beyond that point. It will come, go down. So in their channel, drainage channels. This is a, a one of the drainage channels. This is a manhole. So it collects water from all ponds and it goes straight to the mainstream. So, so we cannot have, that's why we can't have floods. Our ponds can't flood because of the, the, the well designed drainage channel. And what are the must-dos for fish farming? Having a, a polluted environment, poisonous environment, like say people who spray around, eh? that is, it's, it's, a, it's not good, they will die. Then of course the, the, you must have, the, the things you must have are feed, are reliable, 
and skilled labor and of course market. I think those are the key. The recent drought and hunger that hit the country affected most farmers. But how was it for the fish farmers? For us it doesn't affect us because we have a, a constant supply of water. This is our reservoir, our water reservoir. Uh, it is meant to be a backup in case of anything, in case our water levels go down. But uh, generally, we don't we use it for, for, for fish, for fish farming also. His advice to those interested in this enterprise is clear and straight to the point. Well, the first thing for intending farmers is to have a positive attitude and start if you want to do fish farming, for example. Um, it is doable and uh, there is nothing hard. It's a matter of being uh, focused, focused on, on, on it. You can succeed. If you can succeed in class, then you can succeed in fish in farming, as long as you are interested. There are a number of challenges to overcome as much as the market is enormous. Please share with us. The biggest challenge is feeds. The cost of feeds, manufactured feeds, eh, is high. So that's why we improvise and, and do our own things. Yeah, but they also grow. What matters is the protein content. When we come back from the break, get to know how breeding is done. This got me really hooked and there is a lot to learn. Like I said at the start of the show that at this beautiful farm there is fish breeding as well. How is this done? Do we have special fish to focus on? Join me as Isaac takes us on this journey. Yeah, we, in, in these ponds we, <clears throat> we have broodstock. Broodstock are like the mother fish, the parent fish, which we use to breed. So now, each of these ponds has 400 fish. Some have female, some have male only. They are big, 2 kilos, 3 kilos, and around there. So it is from this broodstock that we get the young fish. These are the parents, these are the children in here. So this is the hatchery. When you see it for the first time, you would never imagine the big tilapia that is often times enjoyed by many was but a tiny fry. So this is the fish hatchery. I can say it's not easy. But it's doable because all you need to do is to have healthy parents, a healthy fish, which will give you good eggs if it's a female and good sperms for the males. So we put the two together, uh, create ideal conditions that in terms of temperatures, the, the light. To be sincere, for me the whole idea sounded complicated. Isaac had to take me through in detail on how easy the process is so that even a starting farmer can undertake it. Uh, what happens is that we get the broodstock, the, 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 the big fish, the parent fish. We get the male and the female. And uh, from the male we get sperms. From the female we get eggs. We put them together and create ideal conditions for them to hatch. After 19 hours, they will have hatched to get very tiny fish, which we nurse up to, we nurse them for one to two months and take them outside into the greenhouse. These are two and a half weeks. We shall, grow, we shall keep them here for about two months, take them outside to the greenhouse. We take them to a greenhouse to make them use it to harsh conditions. So that when you buy them, you don't lose any. Isaac, please explain the temperatures under which the young fish should be kept before being taken to the greenhouse. Average is 27 degrees Celsius. We try to have an ideal, uh, an ideal system or 
an ideal, ideal conditions for them to grow. For example, this, this is air. It is pumped in by uh, <coughs> a machine up there. This is a compressor that pumps oxygen into all these tanks. We use it because, the, because of the high population density. The higher the population, the more oxygen that is required. So the more the fish, the more the oxygen. They have their special feed. This, 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 this one is imported. We don't get it from Uganda. It has a high protein content to make them grow faster. You can see now they, are, they have come to eat. But they have, I think they have already eaten. That's why they are not diving so much. Depending on the fertilization rate, one is able to anticipate the number of fish to get per batch. These, in the long run, are sold to farmers who intend to join the business. Uh, it depends on your, um, we call it hatchability rate or the fertilization rate, but on average, you can get 300 fish, 300,000, which you nurse. You keep nursing until you save. We save this to farmers. You need to be extra careful while dealing with the hatchery. Imagine one has to clean the pond and yet the fish is very small. How is this process managed so as not to hurt the fish? Okay, just like, like the same system with ponds. This one has an inlet and an outlet. Now this is the inlet. You can see. This is the outlet. The inlet, because of, one of the advantages of letting the water come in all the time is to increase the amount of oxygen going into the water. And that is one. Two, it, it flushes out the dirt. As the water goes out, the residue also goes out. So now they are, they, they, you have to do cleaning twice or thrice a day. Uh, if you don't do that, they will die. When they are washing, you remove this. There is, an, there is another one in here, which, which lets the water out. So this is the outlet, you can see. And uh, the water is going out, the dirt is also going. Of course they hide. They, they have some senses also. So they have to come. Very delicate, yeah. Now these ones, you can, these are even bigger. Of course it's careful. See, yes, there can be some damage somewhere. So this water that comes in is warm. Yeah, we have a, a boiler. We warm it. We, have, we use firewood to warm it. We have a boiler in there. So it warms a bit, then we, it comes and saturates. Important to note, for fish, one has to keep it as natural as possible. No sprays, no disinfectant. So we can use salt maybe. So the, the, the process is natural. We don't use any artificial things. You spray, they die. Given the delicate nature of the fish, how then do prospective farmers transport the fingerlings to their different destinations to start farming for business? So when you come to buy, we pack for you in the polythene bags. And we use this, we pump this oxygen into the bags when you bought. We shall cut this polythene bag from here, tie here. Then we go to our oxygen cylinder, pump in some oxygen, put fish and water, then we tie again here and we transport. So you can transport this to, for, for, you can travel for a whole day with this, carrying oxygen and fish and water. But before the fish is sold off like Isaac said, it's first taken to the greenhouse to get them ready to the harsh conditions it would face. I had to see for myself what exactly happens in the greenhouse. So here they will bring them for easy management. They grow in a small area and at a higher rate. So these, 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 we keep these ones here until we get a buyer. 
like where we've been before, they have inlets and outlets. So this is the inlet, that's the outlet. So you can ask, you can, uh, you may, you may say, why should one have a tank? One of the reasons is you keep a lot of fish in a small area. Yeah, because this tank can accommodate up to 3,000 fish. Unlike in the hatchery, the temperatures here are really hot. Catfish likes high temperatures, so uh, it grows faster under high temperatures. Uh, right now, I am, it's about 36. So here we don't need to warm the water. <coughs> You can see here the, the, the water levels are a bit higher yeah, because there is a lot of fish. You see, the, 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 higher, the, the higher the fish, the, the more the water. So the water will come up to here if it is full. Before anyone embarks on to the business venture, it is crucial to know if there is ready market for the produce. So what of fish? We get an expert opinion from Mr. Godfrey Kigoye, an agriculture consultant. Is there an assured market for fish in Uganda, considering it's one of the biggest contributors to Uganda's export? In fact, the market starts from you. You yourself, you need source on it at a daily basis. Then, too, it goes outside there. The nearest market, you who are seated there in your sitting room, one of the things they trade, one of them is fish. Then the international market is also there because fish, we export it. Here in Uganda, we have more than uh, five factories that are exporting fish. One is in Luzira. Other people are there. There is go fish, go fresh fish. They also export tilapia species. The market we have, we cannot finish. If we have, you just bring. Two, you can smoke when you are vest. Kenya is taking. Juba is there. People are taking. Congo. I have a truck I know that takes fish on every Wednesday and Friday. Smoked fish to Congo. And there you say there is no market. On a weekly basis, twice to Congo. So, neighboring countries here, then outside there, uh, European countries, they are taking. So, the market, the guarantee is there. Go fish farming, the market. The only problem we have is that we don't feed, I mean feed them. If you are to go into fish farming as a business, buy feeds for your fish. They are what we call pellets. Making pellets is a simple is formulate feed, get soya, fish, the, 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 the smaller fish, crush, get the blood. When they slaughter animals in the outside there, trap that blood, boil, then to clothes, sand dry, crush, put in a mix of so many things and maize blend fine. Then mingle, get a iron sheet, use a six inch nail, hammer it in to get some small holes. Then place that baked thing on it. As balls made down is there, do that the pills dry and then start breaking it. Feed your fish. If you are lucky, you land. It ends where there is a valley or a swamp that has permanent source of water. Just dig a pond of just 10 meters by 15 meters. And digging a fish pond, do not need to get an excavator. The depth, if you are to, uh, to go into catfish or tilapia, they don't need deeper water. They need shallow water. About two feet in the out or two and a half feet in the inner way we call an inlet, then outlet goes for three feet maximum and then you you about five feet you you are seated you are more, uh, five feet and above okay some are less but the three feet is just one meter that's the maximum can't you dig one meter to that length then you can stock over 2200 fish of fingering okay let's say on the way there some died you have harvested, say, 2,000. And if each one goes for 16,000 per kilo, you are likely to get 36 million or 30 million. 
from that very place, close to one year, in that little money, and God gave you water. It's just there. You divert it, it goes in, goes out. No need of purchasing these oxygen packs that we always use when you are to uh, uh, do it in container farming, fish farming, or drum fish farming, where we need to at least eh, boost the oxygen because of the purpose and all that. Because when you overstock, there is a risk of uh, eh, sometimes dies. Because when they poop, there is ammonia developing in, and then they die. There is also a risk of uh, protozoa, uh, um, amoebas that can develop within the, the ponds. But if you have your natural source, you cannot experience such. But there is money. The question was at the market. There is market, the market is there. Next week on Seeds of Gold, we meet a unique combination of a mother and son who have made farming fun and enjoyable. Their value addition left me thinking.